You want to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. When you hear us singing something like, I pour my love on you, like wine for you to drink till every drop is gone. I pour my love on you. You don't pour your love with mouth, you pour it with substance. You pour it with substance. Like wine for you to drink. Like water from the I pour my love on you. With praise is like perfume. I lavish. I lavish my on you. Till every drop is gone. Till every drop is gone. I pour my love. I pour my love. Like wine. Like oil upon your feet. That's why the old man loves this box. Like oil for you to drink. Water from my heart. I pour, I pour my love on you. If praise is like, if praise is like perfume, I have a smile on you. Oh, on you. Every drop is I pour my love in you. I pour my love. One more time, say like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink again, like water from my heart. Yeah, I pour my love on you. We praise is like. Do you understand worship? Are you hearing what I'm saying? A woman came into a meeting where Jesus was having a meeting, into a building where he was having a meeting, and then he rushed past the protocol, went to the very spot Jesus was meeting. You know what she did? She accumulated all her salary put together. One of the things I am angry about is religion. Religion will never make you worship. You will tie her tie and be going to church. When they say let us pray, you carry your hand and put on your head. Thinking that's how to please God. You are a broke man. Broke woman. You don't understand God. You think God is about observing a protocol. When you come to church, you walk sanctimoniously. You think that's worship. You carry your head tie, tie on your head. You think that's worship. That's not worship. That's how the Pharisees and the Sadducees served God. That's why when Jesus said, This mountain that you worship, this temple you worship, I will destroy it. I rebuild it in three days. And they were angry with him. They didn't understand. Jesus was a cutting edge paradigm apostle. He came to shatter the old pattern, the old order, the way things are done. That's why I hate orthodoxism. You know what's about worship? No matter how old you grow, God keeps renewing your heart. I say, no matter how old you, He keeps renewing your heart like the heart of a young child, like the heart of a young youth, like the heart of a baby. Why? Because it takes baby hearts to worship. This morning, I was in my house sleeping. You know, there's a way I can be. I got up at one point. Left the, 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 the building. I went into my car, into one of my vehicles, opened the door, and I got at the back seat, turned on the engine of the car, and lie down there and began to speak in other tongues. I left the car on, turned on the AC, carried my pillow, left my house, went downstairs, and laid inside. Lie down there. Played one small song. Left the car steaming on, steaming all night, all night, all night. All night all night why because there was no light and then i cannot be in a house my spirit wants to worship 
and then light is going to stop me. No, 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 no. I feel something in my vein. I had to go downstairs on my car all night, burnt the fuel, burnt the engine, burnt everything, stayed there, played that song. Worship was going. The AC was calling me. I lied down inside there, praying in tongues, worshiping in tongues. And guess what? Early morning, around five. A particular vehicle was behind me. I've not seen that vehicle in my company before. A Mercedes Jeep. I was like, who is the owner of this car? It was behind me. I didn't know it was my neighbor. You know, they had children who came to visit them for holidays. Their parents came to pick them back. So they slept over the night. So guess what? Around that 5.30, they were coming out to enter the vehicle so they can go. That's the two kids that came to visit. The sister to the man. So the children came to visit the man. On holidays now school has reopened they have to go back when their mom carried them this morning as they were entering the car i saw the other two children of the man himself you know what they were doing no no If you would worship me, you will have a child like that. A heart that is reaching out to God. When you come into God's house and then you meet God in his presence and it's like God is about to take his leave. You are shouting, no God, God, I can't go. I can't leave your presence. You can't go. No God, God, God. More of you, more of you stay. No God, I want to stay with you. I want more, I want more. Don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. What do you want? Just to have you more. Just to have you more. What do you? Okay, Lord, see money, see money. I want more of your presence. I want more of your glory. There's nothing you want I won't give to you. Huh? God said, that's the heart I'm looking for. Not stony heart. Not big boy's heart. Not big girl's heart. People who worship is going on in church, they are sitting down and claiming tiredness for God. You don't know your God. People who worship is going on in church, they are busy looking at their time to check when the service is going to be over. You don't know the God you serve. And he said, do not lay your hand on that boy again. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son. And he added, your only son. That statement couldn't have been made with smile. It was made in tears. Abraham, you couldn't hold your son. Your only son. It could have been made with a heart that was torn into trash. The same son that took you years to get. The same son you didn't get in your youth. You didn't get it when you were 30 years old. You didn't get it when you were 40 years old. You didn't get that son when you were 50, 60, 70 years old. You got that son when you were 100 years old. Your wife was already 90 years old. When you got that son, you would not withhold that same son from me. God must have been broken hearted. What kind of heart would you have? You've looked for a job for years. And now you've found a job. And then your first salary is 500,000, 1 million, whatever it may be. And then this took you many years to get. And you bring that salary. You say, God, for what you've done, I will give you consecutively for the next 12 months my salary. I won't touch one. That is a heart of worship. God, you gave me a car. All these years, no car. Ah, no, 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 no. This one you've given me, I won't drive. I give it back to you. Let your kingdom advance. If you can give me, I know you will give me more. When Abraham let go, the lamp. You know what God did? God gave his ram. See there. Verse number 13. I wish I have all the time to finish this right now. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked. And there behind him was a ram. God asked for a lamb. When Abraham gave up the lamb, God gave him a ram. And you know you can't compare a lamb to a ram. A ram is bigger. God always gives his best. When you give your best and his best your best can never match i remember one time god put it in my heart to give a car i gave a message c class it didn't take up to two months i think it was in the space of one month god gave me a jeep a clean one you will never out give god no matter how you try get into a competition with god no test god god said test me test 
it was a test he put Abraham to. Don't fail the test God is putting some of you to. You will never lose by giving. Never. Real worship is giving. Real worship is burnt offering. Real worship is living sacrifice. If there's one million in your account now and you give it to God, do you know what is shocking? You won't die for giving it. I've never seen anybody died obeying God. Even Jesus who died on the cross rose again. You have nobody has ever died obeying God. Mm. Hey, take me to the other scripture I started reading. Please, can you just give me five minutes? I beg you guys, if you love and honor me and respect me, can you just sit down for the next five minutes so I can round up this teaching? Because on Wednesday I have a new teaching. I don't want to do a part B of this teaching. Can you do me that favor? Thank you, sir. Back to the former scripture, Second Samuel. Now, David wants to reclaim a territory that is overrun by the devil. And then he implements the same principle. What was the principle implemented? That same principle of worship. The same way God said to Abraham, go to Mount Horeb, I will show you a mount where you would go and worship me. God chooses. He doesn't choose. You, you don't choose for him. He chooses. And this is it. David is about to do the same thing. Let my lord, the king, take and offer up. That's uh, 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 what's his name? Aruna speaking. Aruna said to the king, let my lord, the king, take and offer up whatever seems good to him. Look, here are oxen for bond sacrifice and threshing implements and the yokes of the oxen for wood. So the guy is now giving up something to Abraham. To who? David. King David. But now, look at what King David said. This will shock you. All this, O oh king, Arona has given to the king. And Arona said to the king, May the Lord your God accept you. See verse 24. Then the king said to Arona, No, no, no. No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Pause. Somebody is giving everything to the king because he's king. Take, sir. All you want to offer to God is here. Collect an offer. It is a privilege for me to give my king things to offer. See David's response. This one will shock you. He said, no, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. You're receiving free items of worship. Free items of sacrifice. And then you say no. The governor of this state did something one time that shook me to my marrows. I found out why God gave him the office. You see, you're talking about business expansion. Learn these principles I'm teaching you. Learn it, you beat crunches. Learn it. What God is giving you now, small, small, is children's bread. He's just trying to show you his love and faithfulness. He's going to take you to a point where he will now demand responsibility from you in the kingdom. Then that's where he will give you weight. The marketplace cannot be collected by talk. It's not by hard work. It's altar. That man has sense that I covet. Sense that I covet. Sense that I covet. I covet that is sense. He went to a place. Then he had not even become governor. He was building their church. The one there. And then guess what? He went to ShopRite to buy something with his family. That was when ShopRite, you know, was still new. When he got in, he looked at the ceiling. How he liked the POP. He said, wow, this is beautiful. Wow. Wow. This is beautiful. You know what he did? Left everything he came to buy. Took his family, his convoy, and drove back to Abakliki. I went to the church. They had already roofed the church. You know the kind of roof they use? This kind of roof. You call this what? What do you call this? PVC. When he got in, he called the pastor and said, uh, Pastor, I want to change all this roof now. He said, why? This is beautiful. It's sparkling clean. Beautiful. Why do you want to change it? And you know when you use these PVCs, when you use some of these items to build, you can't use them again if you bring them down. Because it has really taken its shape. He said, no, no. Bring it down. I went to shop right to buy something. 
I saw POP ceiling inside shop right building. The place of sales cannot be more important to. It can be more beautiful than the place of the worship of my God. That's what he said. It's the place where people come to buy things. Cannot be looking more beautiful than where my God is worshipped. He said, pull it down, I will build a new one. And that's after he has spent millions building that roof. They pulled down the whole roof the following day. He built that POP. He built there. They condemned the other ones. How can God see such a heart? God will be too wicked not to allow him win. Both first and second election. And then in church, people want to collect the thing with no responsibility. I want to say it again. I have a feeling out of this church, politicians will rise. When I preach with this passion, it's because I want you to break this limit. You can't break it by sitting down and looking at me. Break it. If you are a son of this mandate, start taking radical steps of worship and see if God will not do things that would amaze you. And then David said, I will give to God nothing that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for what? 50 shekels of silver. I don't want to do the calculation today. That's millions of dollars. So I can close quickly. Second Chronicles chapter 3 verse 1. What will shock you, my dear, is what happened finally when David did the sacrifice. If you see the turn around, I won't read that. But the most shocking thing is that the same place David went to buy that property was the same place Abraham offered Isaac. No time for that analysis today. I don't have the time. I would have taken you there. The same spot. This may have sense. Now look at this. When David died, and Solomon his son was about to become king, David gave Solomon a very stern instruction concerning the building of God's temple. You know, David had gathered everything that it would take to build the temple, and God said to him, don't build, don't build, don't build, because your hands are full of what? Blood. Is that correct? He said, don't build, your hands are full of what? blood. He said, but transfer the responsibility of the building to who? To your son, Solomon. He's going to build it. And guess what? Solomon is not the legitimate son of who? David. He was born out of what? Wedlock. That's the product of the meeting that David had with who? With Besh- With who? Besheba. The wife of who? Uriah. Good, you know it. David had sons though. He had other people who would have inherited that whatever. How come it was this guy? He said, let your son build it. Because God knew that's the one that has a heart. That's the one that will do my biddings. That's the one that will obey instruction. That's the one that will spare nothing. And now see this. Now Solomon began to build. Second Chronicles 7, 3 verse 1. The house of the Lord. At what? Jerusalem. On Mount what? Moriah. Have you caught the secret? Have you got the secret? Yes, now, can I shock you? I told you when we were worshiping this morning that somebody's 30 minutes worship will give him 30 years of settlement. Are you seeing transgenerational settlements? What Abraham did on the same mount, that mount became an altar. And you will see that it didn't stop with Solomon, it traveled down to Jesus. Shocked enough, the same place Jesus was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary, called Golgotha, is Mount Moriah. The same mount. Abraham did something that I don't know what force can undo Abraham in this world. He is the father of faith. I don't know if there can be two Abrahams in this world again. I don't know. The place God selected for his son to be sacrificed, that Golgotha, is Mount Moriah. The very place we go to today and then we come back and collect Jerusalem pilgrimage as a title, is Mount Moriah. When we go to see where Jesus was killed and sacrificed, that place has become an, an epitome of, because of one guy. Somebody's worship is going to create a testament today. Amen. I didn't hear your amen like a thunder. Amen. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's for your children. Maybe it's for whatever. Somebody's worship. Somebody's worship. Somebody's worship. Do you know I'm talking to you now? God is giving me personal instructions here. For myself, not for you. For myself. 
Now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah where the Lord had appeared to his father David. The same place the Lord appeared to Abraham. At the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor. Are you seeing that that's Mount Moriah? Of Onan, the Jebusites. Then verse 2. And he began to build on the second day of the month in the fourth year of his reign. Keep going please and fast. I don't have time again. This is the foundation which Solomon laid for building the house of God. If you read all those things he's talking about, this one is foundation they're dealing with now. If you see what they're dealing on the structure and everything that he used to build it, if you quantify the what today, is a multiple dimensions of millions of dollars. But that's not just where the story ends. If you realize... When he was done, the guy did not just build with all those items. He sacrificed unto God in thousands of cattle. In fact, there was one he gave God 180,000 sheep or thereabout. He gave God uncountable thousands of items. Bond offering. That's worship. And guess what happened? God appeared to him in the night and said what? Solo, my man. What do you want? Mention it now. And I will give you. Guess what Solomon said? God, only one thing I need. Wisdom. That I may be able to do what? Lead these people that you've given me. Ah! Do you know what God said? God said, even if you ask me for nothing, I have made up my mind on what to do for you. He said, you didn't ask me for riches and prosperity. I will give you wisdom. Collect your wisdom. But in our kingdom, when you do this kind of a thing, there's something we do. In blessing, material blessing, money, is it, you want your anything at all. We have already made budget for you. All the years of your reign, Solomon, you will not go to war. Somebody's not hearing. Because sacrifice fight your battles and win them. The altar is a place for fighting and winning battles. Any battle you're losing in life was lost on the altar. Any battle you're winning in life was won on the altar. Some of you don't know what money is. You think money is for chicken and crunches. Money is a battle weapon. It's a tool for fighting battles. They say barrenness is in your family. You don't know anything self. Carry a battle axe. Carry a seed in your hand. Carry a sacrifice. Look for an altar. You have one here. And slay that sacrifice. And let's see if that demon will not leave that womb. Study issues going around your family. Study issues going around your health. Study issues going around. You have prayed and prayed and prayed. Nothing has happened. You have not yet tied a sacrifice. And you want to break that yoke. Solomon had 40 years of reigning as a king and didn't go for one battle. Solomon's wisdom was so high that a king also became a judge. There was no chief judge in Solomon's time that was able to legislate or to preside over cases difficult like Solomon. One time they brought a particular baby and they were trying to identify who the mother of the baby is. It was Solomon that said, hey, let's show you. The way out of this thing, since you guys are confused, say, Bring me the baby. Who amongst you says the mother of this baby? Say, It's me, says me, it's me. Everybody, including Sam, senior advocate of Israel, were all confused. All the chief justices were all confused. Solomon collected the boy and said, Okay, since so none of you want to admit that he's not the owner, bring me Cutlass. They brought Cutlass. The boy said, spread their two legs. He collected the knife up. As he was about to divide the baby, one shouted, no, sir. No, don't kill him. Since she says he's her baby, give it to her. But I know something. When this baby grows up, she will know the mother. Give it to her. Don't worry. Now we can't do DNA tests. Can you imagine? In a period where there was no DNA machine, how did Solomon do DNA? even when he was not a doctor how did he do that clean he said when the baby grew he go know him mama 
to skip the woman, no problem. Take care of him for me. Oh. So no said, collect the baby, give it to her. That's the mother. All the judges, all the elders, all the men of substance and property fell on their face. Say, so where commence this kind of wisdom? You want to know where the wisdom of your pastor comes from? You want to know where the understanding of your pastor comes from? You want to know where the intelligence of your pastor comes from? It's not from classrooms, sir. It comes at the place of intimate sacrificial worship to my God. That's why you say I don't play with worship. You can't be a worshiper and not carry wisdom. I said it here earlier. You can't be a worshiper and not have power. You can't be a worshiper and not be a general in the kingdom and not be prosperous if you don't know how to sing don't bother singing is not worship just understand the altar what i'm saying that's worship finally sir as i close final scripture as i close as i close on the mozina madune kele Onyendi muzi na madu nekele palato kataya. Onyendi muzi na madu na pisa na ne. Hey, kabadedo satadede. I feel like even renting my garments now and showing God how much my heart longs for Him. My life consists in Him. In Him I live. In Him I move. And in Him I have my being. There is no habitat outside God for me. Onyendi mozi na madu na pisa la ne etie umso otie umso etie. Sacrifice back to Mount Moriah. That's what we're going back to. Hey, Kabalo, can you pray in other tongues? <laughs> Worship him in other tongues. Pado Sata Kata, Bondo Seledo Sata, Bondo Sakata, Pandoro Satede. for just one more minute as I close 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 see what it says now when Solomon had made an end of praying the fire came down from heaven and 
consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. <laughs> this is the secret of fire will not come down until the sacrifice. Ask Elijah where he sacrificed the bullocks put the water fire came down. Fire came down. You and I know you don't light in a, dry, a, a wet wood. You only light in a dried wood. In God's kingdom the reverse is the case. Fire came down, consumed it. When Solomon had offered to God that sacrifice of bulls in their thousands, the Bible says fire came and licked it up. When you read down, you now see where God demanded from Solomon what he wants. I've already mentioned that. That's in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. You want to see fire coming down on your life sacrifice you don't need a CV to get a new job give that current one you have as bond offering the new one will come bond offering bond offering that job you have now bond offering a new one will come you want to have a secured future where you're through from school you want a good job you want a new business whatever it is you don't need too much of calculation bond offering worship In heaven, this is the practice. And you will see, this is what God demands of the earth. And that's the last scripture. Hi, I have a lot of things to show you. Can I talk to you about Job? Look at the Bible. Littered with men who became heavily rich, wealthy, on the account of worship. Job. No wonder he worshipped even when he lost everything. Because he knew he didn't lose them. Johnson. There's a way worshippers define things, sir. They don't define it the way we define it. It's a big... Show them Job. Job chapter 1. Put it up. You need to see these things. You need to start practicing. Don't wait until you come to church. You can fill your room with smoke. Hey, yeah. You can fill your car with smoke. I know how to do it. You can fill your living room with smoke. When we sing, what we do is to create the atmosphere for doing worship. Singing is not the worship. Singing is what creates the atmosphere for worship. That's why when we sing and we do all those things, we start giving. Any worship that does not go give it is fake. It's emotional. It's done in the flesh. And then look at Job chapter 1. Permit me to show you this. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright. And one who did what? Feared God and shunned evil. What happened in verse 2? And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. What happened in verse 3? Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. That means he had an estate. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. That's how I know. I'll be one of the greatest pastors from the East. It's not about location. It's about the altar. It's not about where you are. It's about the principles you adhere to. I have long stopped that excuse that the East is hard. No. I want an altar that works. I will take care of the Southeast. But this is not what I want to show you. I just want to show you how thick the man was. Show them Job chapter 4 now. That's why I want to show you something. This is where the real deal is. Job chapter 4, verse 20. What happened to Job? This same Job lost everything. But he knew he didn't lose them. Because his language didn't define it as lost. His language told us that that was worship. Hey, 
Keva Bahada. They are broken in pieces from morning till evening. They perish forever with no one regarding. Now, that's the last statement all the bad news agents gave Job. You know, they kept coming in different numbers. Job, your sons were feasting. Mountain fell on them. They died. Job, your daughters were having fun. Vows fell on them. They died. Job, this will happen. This will happen. And then everything is lost. Now look at verse 21. Does not their own excellence go away? They die even without wisdom. Verse 22. Quickly. I said Job chapter... Oh, sorry. It's the same Job chapter 1, verse 20. I'm reading a different scripture. Sorry. 20, yes, thank you. Verse 20. Then Job arose. Okay, starting from verse 19. Verse 19, please. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. <laughs> Bad news. And it fell on the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to come and tell you. How come there's only one person who is escaping? Different people coming to tell bad news. They were the only ones that, that means the devil knows how to set you up. He knows how to set you up. And what was he targeting? Job. Abandon God. Follow me. You've lost everything. Come, I'll give them back to you. But Job understood something higher. He said, then Job arose. What did he do? Tore his robe. Not to mourn. Shaved his head. And he fell to the ground and did what? You know why he worshipped in this kind of situation? He had always been a worshipper. It was worship that brought all the wealth. He had always known. So in his mind, ah, that means there's a next level for me. Oh. If all these things are gone, next level. What do I do now to launch to my next level? Worship. The same thing I did to bring the wealth. Now it is gone. I will need to also worship to bring the profit back. Now see what Job said that is very striking. Verse 21. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb. That is not all. And naked shall I return there. That is not all. This is where the thing is for me. The Lord gave. Who gave? Who gave? Why did he give? Worship. And now see what he said again. And the Lord has taken away Nothing enters his hand and is lost. That's the word of a worshiper. The Lord gave me these things. I know how it came through worship. The Lord has taken. So before I give credit to the devil, I better turn this into a sacrifice. The Lord has taken his bond offering. And now what did he say? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A language of worshippers. Even when things are turning upside down. I wish I can show you the later end of Job. Everything you read in verse 1. At the last chapter. You will see Job collected double for all his trouble. Oh. All the while he kept worshipping. I know my redeemer leave it. It was Job who was singing it. The wife came and said, cause God and die. He said, when we had enough to eat, you didn't cause God. God was faithful to us. Now that we don't have, you say we should cause God. My friend, away with you. The same thing that the devil said to Jesus. The same thing the wife appeared and said to Job. The same thing Jesus said to the devil. What, what Job said to the wife. No wonder Jesus finally collected glory in heaven. No wonder Job finally collected double for all his trouble. We need to master this thing. What does God demand of us when we worship? Revelation chapter 5. For those of you who do not know what worship is, you think it's singing. No, sir. Singing is a vehicle that creates the atmosphere for us to do worship. What did I say? Singing is a vehicle that creates the atmosphere for us to do what? Worship. It is when we are singing in those worship songs, we are singing in church, that people should be bringing their phones, bringing their money, bringing their checks, bringing their house keys, bringing their car keys to the altar. That's when you make an exchange for things that you want. Unfortunately, we have turned worship to singing. But look at all the men who worship. Have you been seeing worship, worship, worship? And none of them were singing. From henceforth, come to church, wherever you go, 
with a, with a worship attitude. Worship is burnt offering. Worship is sacrifice. It will get to that point in this church. As you learn and master these things, you'll be coming for service with house documents. Yes. With land documents. You just receive your salary. Bam! You carry all of them. Worship. You just get a new car. You carry the car and come to church. People think you just came to church with your car. They didn't know you came to worship. You just got a new house. Carry the key. Come to church. If you see the kind of church we will have. Explosions. Left, right, center. Revelations chapter 5. Verse 11. Oh, because of time. Let's read from verse 11. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. What kind of figure is that? Mathematicians, let's do this mathematics. What kind of figure is this? 10,000 times times 10,000 times thousands and thousands. What kind of mathematics is that? It's uncountable, sir. That's what it means. Uncountable. Please do that, that mathematics. The calculator will tell you error. And all these people we have, what are they doing? Let me show you. Some of you think they are singing. That's a vehicle that conveys our worship. Singing creates the atmosphere for us to do worship. Now look at what is said in heaven. That should be done when we worship. Now, what are they saying? Say with a loud voice. Worthy is the what? Lamb. Who was slain to receive what? Everybody say power. power. Everybody say power. power. In this church, let us make it a culture that no matter who you are, president, governor, minister, senator, when you come to church, you give your power. I look towards earnestly for that day where president of the fair republic will come to church while we are worshiping he'll be rolling on the ground somebody say i hear that day where a senator will come to church when we're worshiping she'll be rolling on the ground crying like a baby receive power political power whatever kind of power Number two, to receive what? Can I hear you? To receive what? Riches. That's money. Are you not seeing that worship is not singing? What does God receive when we worship? Power. What does he receive again? Money. Someone say money. He receives it. He says he's worthy to receive it. Money is a tool of worship. Number three, what? Wisdom. Everybody shout it loud and clear. Wisdom. Wisdom. You have a first class, a PhD professorship is nonsense if you can't give it to God. God wants to see a professor sit down in church and he's typing on the laptop translating all the scriptures we are projecting all the scriptures. He wants to see a professor sit down at the laptop there and he's the one updating all our info. Everything I'm saying here, updating it on Facebook. A professor. He wants to see a senior advocate of Nigeria using his senior advocacy to serve the church, the body of Christ. He wants to see a medical doctor, a chief consultant, chief medical director, come to church, use his medical wisdom to do missions, to worship God. So if you think achievement means run away from God, you will run to hell. Imagine, I refuse to worship God with all the things he has given me, the wisdom he has given me. Is it not wisdom that is making me preach the way I preach? It's not wisdom that makes me break the Bible to a way you can understand it. It's not wisdom. Imagine I carry this wisdom and dump it somewhere and I'm claiming one thing. Nowadays, people think church are for church rats. People think church are for children. People get too busy to serve God because they feel church is for the downtrodden. My friend, church is for the noble. Church is for the intelligent. Church is for the wealthy. Church is for the rich class. Church is not for necessarily downtrodden. We come here to be made rich to help the downtrodden. When you come to church, you can surrender your riches, your power, your wisdom. What again did he say? Your strengths. What again did he say? Your honor. 
He is qualified to receive it, Mr. Honorable. Stop making noise with your jeeps. Stop making noise with your jeeps. Mr. Senator, he's qualified to receive it. And what again? And what? Glory. He's qualified to receive your splendor, your glory, your whatever. He's qualified to receive your honor, royal majesty. He's qualified. And what again? And blessing. And blessing. Whatever blessing you think you have. Your cars, your house. He's qualified to receive it. Can we read verse 13? What does it say? And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. The last scripture I'll read as we close. John chapter 4 verse 20 to 24. How does God expect this worship to come? What is the, what is the condition? What condition must a man be found in to be able to give this thing? Because when they ask you now, oh yeah, surrender your wealth, God needs it. You'll be there, dragon. Surrender your wisdom, God needs it. You'll be there, dragon. Surrender your power, God needs it. You'll be there, dragon. Can't you see a God of a state? Every service he attends. And someone who is just struggling to make ends meet here is doing guy for God because he has 5,000 in his account. But a governor of a whole state goes to church, sees that he's writing. Writing. The pastor is a woman. He's senior the woman. Yes, when the pastor is preaching, the woman will be vibrating. Governor, my friend, governor. With all the police ex- escorts. Then guess what some of our attitude is? The pastor is preaching. In your head, you're analyzing the scripture. Pastor, I know that's verse. You misquoted it. No wonder you're still tracking. No wonder there's nothing for you. Because familiarity don't finish you. Bernama will be jumping for a woman. Yes, pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She told say, come here, Dickie. Not even your excellency. Come here, Dickie. The Dickie will need that now. Come. <laughs> say, God say, I should tell you. Yes, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're talking to somebody. Maybe the person. Yes, that's right. A prophet once told me that last week. This is a confirmation. You're right. No, no, that's not true, Pastor. No. I heard this one. He said, that's true. Mm-hmm. That's right. No wonder you are still tricking. Hello? True worship humbles you, sir. If I demand your substance now, will you give it to me? Will you give it to me? Uh There's a vehicle that will make you give it. Because you can't do it in the flesh. You carry your Range Rover and come to church. And I say, pack it outside there. Go and drop the key. Or you have a moose. Carry leg and go back home. I expect a new one soon. Will you do it? Super fierce, you're going back home. That's how you have to be doing. Bim, mm, bim, mm, bim, bim, mm, bim, 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 You have to become a drum for us in church. Bim. And you're coming to the next day. That's how you'll be looking at the car where it is. This pastor, self, he just collects our cars and sells it. What is going on here? That's why they will go on social media and start attacking church. That's why they go on Facebook and start attacking church. Because they don't know how God ordained this thing to be. And this is the final scripture. John chapter 4 verse 20. A woman was sitting at the side. Jesus was sitting at the well by Samaria. And a woman came to fetch water. And Jesus entangled her and engaged her in a very serious discussion. They spoke and got to a point. And then the woman said this to him in John chapter 4 verse 20 our fathers worshipped on this mountain and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship look at verse 21 quickly Jesus said to her believe me the hour is what coming and what when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the father the next verse the next verse is that it God is what spirit everybody say together God is what let's read together I want to go God is spirit 
and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth no you've not gotten it can we get it one to go from the top god is spirit and those who worship him must in spirit and truth did he say those who worship him may worship him in spirit and in truth those who worship him should try to worship him in spirit and in truth what is it those who worship him must command must that means worship can be done in the flesh he said in spirit in spirit and in truth the word truth there is obedience the word truth there is not i am telling the truth now i worship you lord ah, the truth is that i can i, I love you lord the truth is that I, I worship you lord that's not it truth there is obedience they must worship him in spirit and in truth the next verse what did he say verse 25 the woman said to him i know that the messiah is coming who is called christ when he comes he will tell us all things well, well that's not even my focus there's another translation where it says for the father seeketh such to worship him god is not seeking for people who worship in the flesh he's looking for worship in the spirit and in truth the condition for effective worshiping is spirit and what truth spirit and in truth that's what the bible says as many who are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god hear this i perceive in my spirit this season of prosperity part of the things that will launch you into the mainstream of your wealth is heeding to the voice of god's spirit is heeding to the instructions of god is yielding completely and obeying the things god will drop in your heart this season if you are willing and obedient what did the bible say you will eat the good of what the land why are you not eating the good of the land you are not willing you're not obedient move away from flesh so if you are led by your senses calculations calculations human reasoning that's where you can obey God I received a notice from someone a few days ago and then some of my pastors came to show me and I sent them to go and do, represent me in the distance. When they came back, they were frowning. When they told me the outcome of the meeting, I said, dancing. I said, Father, thank you for using your hand to push me to another level of faith. I was excited in my spirit. And that person would have started crying. I was dancing. They were looking at me. When I said interpreting the situation to them, they said laughing too. I said, you see, because you are canal. I'm a man of the spirit. There's some of you, when God dries one source, you start crying. Whenever God dries a particular level for me, I start jumping because it's a sign it's time to move to the next level. Hey, you're not catching what I'm saying. You're not even catching what I'm saying. I want to bless somebody this service right now. We're about to give our offerings and our tithes. But before that, I want to pray for somebody. <laughs> you will not fulfill destiny if you're a man of the flesh. Your destiny and the instructions that God will give you to fulfill it will not come in the flesh. They will come in the spirit. Instructions God will give you, your flesh can't handle. God says to Abraham, carry your son and go and kill him. Can your flesh handle that? Amongst your two sons, who do you love most? Tell me they are not seen. Sit down, don't stand. Whisper to me. She said, both of them, liar. Lie, lie. You can't love both of them equally. I see, I see. Now lie, leave that in him. Even me, my children, so I don't love them equally. My three children, I don't love them equally. I know the one I love most. You must love one more than the other one. Ha, 
and there's a way they share it. Mother will love one, father will love the other one. Watch and see. Like there's one I love the most. There's another one my wife loves the most. I'm talking in spirit and in truth. They don't catch you what I'm saying. Somebody's out here. Okay, let me imagine. God says to you, carry your son who you love most. You don't want to tell me that I know. Carry him and go and sacrifice him on Prissy Hill's altar. This is Mount Moriah. Bring it with knife. Oh. Knife. And you'll be the one to sharpen it yourself. Where is this boy? Where is that your son? Come. Come, Oga. Let's sacrifice you now. The guy's about to go. No, this is the last I want to do. I close. So you see how it feels. Nah. How now? Come and lie down. Without any disturbance, he's like, face the other way. No, not like that. I want your back to be on the ground. Uh-huh. Thank you. No. We want to sacrifice now. Close your eyes. Ayako. I want you to, for a second, look at your son. Imagine that God is standing here now. And he's telling you, carry knife, cut this boy's throat, sacrifice him on this altar. Imagine it for one second. One second, imagine it. See you. We have not even done the main thing. She's already emotional. Even yourself, you're emotional already. Imagine, you will see this boy again. Okay, not just that alone. God says, carry this boy now. Fling him to the wall. Let his head burst. And sacrifice him. Do you know a particular man was fighting a battle with Israel? And they were winning him. And the man prepared an altar. Collected his only son. And smashed the boy's head on the wall. And the battle turned around. And they won are you aware another man said to God father help me win this battle on my way back anything that comes out of the house first I will offer to you as the man was coming back from war his daughter the one he loves the most who doesn't come out easily that day because God chose your sacrifice you don't choose it God chooses it God went and woke the lady out of sleep and said your daddy is coming how the guy woke up she doesn't know. And took off from the roof. Yeah. The daddy must have been praying. God, may it not be this lady. Let it be the usual one coming out. That day, the usual one who used to come out went on errand. And the one that doesn't come out, who the father loves the most. You know, that is love children who are always in the house. Eh? This one came out for the first time. When the father saw the girl, he wept why this one and god didn't talk again let me see if you will give it and he carried the girl and gave to god I, I, hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed no child when she changed the prayer point to worship point, not prayer point now worship point. you know what he said father if you give me this son I will offer him back to you. He will be a priest unto you forever. God said, now you have worshipped. Collect the boy. Somebody's not hearing what I'm saying. If it literally happens to you, will you obey? In the flesh, you will never. Because the moment you're giving the instruction, you will remember house rent. Pastor, my salary, I must be joking. But let me shock you. Once your salary drops, it takes only one day for you to finish. Once God's alert drops, it's for generations. Stop playing.
playing hanky panky with God with your brain. Stop. You will not obey this instruction in the flesh. It's not possible. Emotions. Do you know why God didn't tell? Sorry. Why Abraham didn't tell Sarah? Sarah would have stopped Abraham. Because Sarah had always been led by the flesh. I will give you three case study now to prove it to you. First time God spoke to Abraham to Sarah, you will conceive a baby in your old age. Guess what Sarah said? God, leave this thing. You're like mocking me. How come me? So old. Menopause. Give birth. Leave that nonsense, Jare. The lady doubted God. Should I show the second time? Abraham was still in faith, waiting on the promise. Sarah carried her wahala and came and said, Abraham, we have waited for God enough. It is time to help you. God can help you. Let me help you. I cannot give you a baby. Do you see our house help? The one they call her guy. Hey, see, she's too fine. She looks better in their family. Twins run in their family. In their family, yes, now. In their family, they have a lot of beds. I've already sat with her and sampled her opinion, and they can give birth like water. Carry that lady this night. Sleep with her. You're sleeping. I'll be watching. If you're not doing it well, I'll tell you how to do it. Sleep with her. Do three rounds. Nah. In our time, Neku. Three rounds. Amen and amen. Once you finish, you get a baby. Oh, because as for me, nothing. She doubted God and tried to help God. She had always been a woman in the flesh. This was two times this woman proved that God couldn't help them. And now Isaac has come finally. And you want God to make the mistake of going to Sarah again. And tell Sarah, Sarah, I spoke with your husband last night. This time, both of you should go and sacrifice your son. It wouldn't have happened. Because the first time God told Abraham he was going to have a baby in old age, I went and told Sarah. Sarah spoiled the whole arrangement. Sarah doubted God and then he aborted and delayed the program of God for his life. Because woman was always led by her sense and flesh. If you are in the flesh, you will make too much of mistakes and error. That's why God says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Now, why did Abraham not tell Sarah? Because Abraham knew what Sarah cost him the first time. Ishmael with Haggai. So this time he kept quiet. Because if he had told the woman, the woman would have cried. Eh? Abraham, is in Gide. Nichori Megini. Nichori Megini. Yeah? Ebi, is in Nichori Megini. Is in Nichori Megini. One. One that took me 90 years to get. Kichori. You want to kill him? Slaughter his neck. Eh? Abraham, you're not going anywhere. Eh? You know how men behave now? Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, tomorrow we are going to your grandmother's house. Isaac, go and pack your things. People have been saying this to you know. Wakabuka, Joano, Wakabuka, blood money ritualist. You know how they do it now. You know that lady called Chinwe in a Nigerian movie? Town crier. She has received awards and love for crying. Hey, Chiba. Hey, my God. I cry in you. Without effort, the thing starts running. That's what Sarah would have done. And Abraham will get to a point, faith will lift. Walking the spirit will suspend. He will say, hey, My wife is okay. It's okay. Help him. It's a ribu amo. It's a ribu amo. Kefen mekwa. Ike maga dizi cheo. Okwa wa ni be mo chafa. Ha ha cha Ha be ki de ni wa. Abraham to ribu ofun. Ofun pura fon we o. It's a ribu amo. And so when Abraham would change his mind, can you imagine Abraham wouldn't have been the one that would have led to the salvation of the Gentiles? That means redemption would have been lost forever. Walking in the flesh is risky and dangerous. Sense. I'm not here to talk to you about that today. Maybe next time. Shut the the voice of the devil. Anytime God's instruction is coming to you, you always hear it happens. He will come talk. But there's a way to shut him out. 
and that's why it's important to obey God quickly. When you obey God, there's no turning back again. Nothing the devil does again works. I have stand up. Stand now. Amen. In the flesh, you won't do it. In the spirit, it can be done. You see how hard it was for you? You will not even dare lay hands on this boy. In the flesh, it's not possible. In the spirit, it is possible. So that's how it is. God will not demand for the life of your boy. He won't demand for the life of your daughter. He won't kill. But he will demand for something that takes his place in your life. He will demand for that money. He will demand for that car. He will demand for those sacrifices. If you want to be a man connected to mega wealth, never withhold substance from God. Never withhold those tools and implements of worship. Give it to him freely. Nothing in the hands of God is a lost. They come back to you good measures. Press down. Shaking together, running over. A man will give to your bosom. Rest your feet. Let's pray. We hope you've been blessed by the timely word by Pastor Prince Abba. We'd like to hear your testimony. Visit us today at Princeton Hills Church, located anywhere around you, or call 070 331 66762 or 081 three one five 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 seven four seven also visit our website at www.christianhills.org and follow us on all social media handles at Christian Hills Church Christian Hills Church raising global vegans